with Ink on 3. Thanks so much for joining me for the Eating Disorders Awareness Hop. And we have a lot of great creators. There's a lot of great projects. So be sure to check out the links below. And my favorite color is the theme. It's purple. This is the Atelier Artist Grade Fusion Ink in My Jam Purple. And I'm going to be using this for my card. We're going to do some fun tone on tone. So let's get started and get your ink on. So here's the stamp set and the inks and everything we're going to use today. I love this stamp set. It's heels to you. We're going to use the stamps and the coordinating dies. It's a beautiful set with lots of great sentiments. And since we're doing no line coloring, we're going to use the fade out no line coloring ink. And I'll go into detail about that in just a bit. This is the gorgeous Atelier My Jam Purple that we're going to be watercoloring with. Of course, you can stamp with it and all kinds of other things as well. We're also going to use the Shark Tooth White, and that is a fun ink. It's very bright white, and you can do so many amazing techniques with it. Of course, there's re-inkers for everything. I'm going to tell you all kinds of different tips, tricks, and techniques, and you'll be able to make some gorgeous cards for yourself. So we're going to start out making some backgrounds. I just took a little bit of the reinker My Jam Purple, put it on my mat, spritzed it with some water, and I'm going to drag some watercolor paper through it and create backgrounds. A little ink goes a long way. I could probably make four backgrounds. I just made two for the sake of our video, and we're just going to use one of these for the card. And you can dab it off to get some different looks. Here I'm using the ink off cloth to dab it off and you can see you got all these beautiful undertones. So you've got the purple and some pinks to go with it. The other thing that's great about Atelier is it is water reactive. So I just put a little droplets on there and then I dab those off and look at that. We've already got two fantastic backgrounds for different cards. And today we're going to use this one and I'm going to do some stenciling over it. So I wanted to dry it first. So I've grabbed the Pondy stencil. I'm going to tape it onto my mat with some purple tape and then I'm going to grab the shark tooth white because I want to have a really soft pretty background and this is just going to give you this beautiful glow over the my jam purple and you know just generally putting it on there in different spots I'm putting it on pretty thick in some spots thinner in others and just blending it around it's a really great way to soften a color that you have on the background say you did a really bright color and you want to soften it you can go over it with the shark tooth white real lightly and you're going to get this beautiful background you can see how easy this is and I love stenciling because that magic reveal which we're about to see is so much fun so I just put a little more and oh my gosh look at that isn't that beautiful very simple very elegant and very easy to do now I always like to use my ink again so we still have ink left on that stencil with the shark tooth white so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to press it on the other background that we made a little earlier too so I'm going to take my ink off cloth and push it down you can see we could leave it subtle like this and that's really pretty but if we want to make that show a little more I'm going to take my ink off cloth and start dabbing it and then look at that because of the way that ink reacts with water you get that really cool background now if you love a little shimmer like I do I'm gonna grab a little liquid pixie dust I'm gonna put it on a tile and just kind of sprinkle it on and then I'm gonna dab it with my ink off cloth to dry it faster and look at that sparkle it's so easy to use and it's great because you can fill a water brush pen with it too so it's very versatile and it goes a long way so let's get to stamping time to do some no line coloring with the fade out no line coloring ink fade out truly is a magical ink it does something that no other ink on the market does it will absorb the color that we lay on top and what's really cool is it's a completely neutral color it's not really a gray it's not really a tan the secret sauce in the ink is that it has all kinds of colors in it. So you can use it with warm colors and cool colors. 
you can get so many fun results with it and the no line coloring is so much easier than any other way you're going to try. And I wanted to mention that I did stamp on watercolor paper. Anytime you're watercoloring, you wanna use watercolor paper. And I'm using the small fine tip pen brush from Ink on 3. I like to leave the label on. I just kind of snip off the little flag piece. That way I can see what size brush it is. Because we have three different size brushes. We have a small, medium, and a large. And the real difference is in the tip of the brush. And if I leave the sticker on, then I can see exactly which size I'm grabbing. But look, at we're already starting to line color super easily. And we're doing a little wet on wet technique. And you'll notice I am actually dipping right into the ink pad. The trick to watercoloring is always to have less water than you think. So the brush that I'm using is barely damp. It's just, um, you don't want it to be dripping. You just want it to have a little moisture on the tip of the brush. So what I, you'll see me do is I dip into the clean, clear water. I'll brush it off on my ink off cloth, dip into the ink pad, and then I'm going to start at the base of the petal and pull that color up with some more clean clear water. As I do that, you'll see that the fade out ink lines become that color purple. It just magically starts to change and it'll give you like a little bit darker version on the lines and then you can pull it up. And the, to start, what we're doing here is just putting a base coat. I like to go around and do everything the lightest color and we're going to start building our colors up gradually to get that tone on tone effect. One of the things I like to concentrate on is that darker color at the base and then pulling the color up. And what that's going to do is it's going to give my lines a little darkness at the base and then as I pull the color up with clean clear water the tips of the flowers will be a lighter color purple. So you're going to get a lot of variation, which gives you a lot of dimension, and that's what really makes your images pop. The other thing we're doing by painting it a light color in the beginning is we're kind of mapping out where we're going to have our shadows and where we're going to have our highlights. So you can see at the back of the heel there, I color it with a darker color, and then I dip my brush into the water and then I start blending it out and so I'm going to have a darker to lighter look from the back to the front section. You can also think of it as tracing if that makes it a little easier to understand. So you're going to be tracing the lines that you want to have the shadows on and then you're going to take your clean clear water and pull the color out and it's going to give you a lighter version of that color. If you feel like your lines are getting dark, don't worry too much. It does soften as it dries. Or if you feel like it's getting a little fuzzy, also don't worry. It always looks a little different when it's wet as opposed to when it's dry. Everything starts to even out and smooth out as it dries. The other thing with Atelier ink is it's very forgiving. So even if you get some watermarks or some harsh lines or something like that after it's dry, you can come back with your paintbrush and smooth everything out. As you can see, the Fade Out No Line Coloring Ink is truly a magical ink. We are coloring this very detailed image very quickly. We're just running the paintbrush along the lines and it's grabbing the color that we put on top and becoming that color. So it's just such an easy, fun process. And the Atelier ink that we're using with it, I always think of it as a paint because there's so much pigment in it and it just blends beautifully and it's so forgiving and so easy to use. And it really was designed to pair perfectly with the Fade Out No Line Coloring Ink. So it's really a system of coloring and water coloring for your images. So I'm just going along the edges here where I think I would like to have like darker shades where there might be some shadows underneath those flower petals when it hits the shoe. And I'm always concentrating on trying to leave some white space. But if you lose your white space, which is very easy to do, I have a trick that I'm going to show you a little later on how to get that white space back. So right as I said, we are just mapping everything out. We're getting just a really nice light wash on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up. And so here you can see I just 
continued what I was doing and now I'm going to start adding the next layer. I'm going to darken those areas that I shadowed in the beginning and that's how you get that tone on tone look. You just keep adding layer on top of layer. So this is like the third layer of shadow that I'm putting and a lot of times I'll dry in between my layers. The thing I love about this brush pen is the tip of the brush is very firm and it keeps its shape very well so I can get in all those little nooks and crannies and then I can get along that bottom edge of the shoe and get a nice dark line. And here I was just deciding if I wanted to keep the light space there or if I wanted to darken it up, I wound up darkening it up. But I'm just going to keep going around and looking at it and adding a little more dark on top and it's just as I layer each time that color is going to get a little deeper tone and here I'm adding a little bit more now you can see it's really getting a lot of dimension with each layer that I add but you want to wait and dry it in between the layers so that you get that opaque color on top so you're not going to pull all your color out and you can see each time I add a little more it gets a little more depth and a little more interesting now you can see how we're getting the tone on tone look. We've got so many different variations of the one My Jam Purple. We've got a lavender, we have some pretty pinks, a little bit of magenta, and then we've got the deep purple. You could have stopped you know, earlier and not put all that darkness in, but the more dark you put in, the more your image is going to pop. Now here I'm gonna show you with the Shark Tooth White Reinker how you can get some of that white space back. So I'm just gonna take some of the Shark Tooth White with my pen brush, and I'm just gonna start putting it in some of the areas where I had my highlights that I really want to make pop. And it just, you can see as I add it, the shoe just becomes more interesting looking. It has more depth and more dimension. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? So you can add all kinds of highlights in. The Shark Tooth White is just an amazing ink that you can use for all kinds of techniques. And this is one of my favorite ways to use it. It's also great just to splatter with. But look at how my shoe is becoming alive the more I add the Shark Tooth White with as a highlight. But what's also nice is it's really soft. You can blend it real easily and it blends in with the Atelier my gem purple and it just gives you a really pretty soft highlight and it adds so much de depth and dimension to your images. Now you could use the Shark Tooth White ink pad for this as well. It's going to be a little bit lighter color. If you want a, that really bright crisp white I would suggest using the reinker for this. I just dip into the little droplet that I put on my mat I'll lay it on, then I'll wipe some of it off on my ink off cloth, and then blend the edges. But look at that depth and dimension that is coming. It's always amazing to me. Tone on tone is so much fun. It's a fun challenge, but the, the effect you get is so cool because it's just so soft and pretty, and it's easy on the eyes. And you don't have to think too much because you don't have to think about what colors go with each other. You just use one color and pull all the different tones out of that one color and you get this beautiful soft pretty image so i'm going to add a highlight on the bottom of the shoe there and i think i'm about calling that done and so now we're going to put on our sentiment so i'm going to use the blackout detail ink it's a really black ink it's copic friendly it's waterproof but it's really rich and black and fantastic for solid images and of course, the Misty is an amazing tool. So when you have a solid image, sometimes you want to stamp it a couple times, but the blackout is so black, it, it's going to give you a great impression every time. Now I'm going to grab my ink off cloth. I'm going to wipe off my blackout ink. I'm going to rub on some ink off cleaner. It's a really great way to clean your stamp. Super easy. Cleans off even permanent inks. And you're going to see, I can just clean that off real quick and I'll be ready to use that stamp again soon. Look at that. Super clean. So now we have our sentiment on we have the you're beautiful and I put some foam tape on the back of my shoe after I die cut that out and I'm going to place that right in the center of the background that we made earlier I just think the tone on tone has such an elegant look so I'm going to grab some liquid glue 
gives me a little wiggle room. I'm going to center that on an A2 size card front. And then I'm going to add a little bling using the Trinity Stamps embellishment. They have a lot of great embellishments. And I'm just going to pop these on in here. And then I'm going to add a little more bling with some more liquid pixie dust. I'm going to just take my paintbrush and paint it over the flowers. What's great about liquid pixie dust is once it dries, it does not rub off. You can even take it on crops because it's not actually considered a glitter. Okay, here's a quick tip on how to prevent your stamps from staining. You can use our Juicy Embossing Ink, stamp that on, then use our Atelier Ink or any other high quality pigmented ink and stamp that on. Once you stamp it, you can then clean it off and you'll see that you will not have a stained stamp. Now, of course, stained stamps don't hurt anything, but if you don't want to have them, this is a way to try. And there we have our beautiful card all finished and I think it turned out just beautifully. Well I hope you enjoyed creating that card with me and I hope you'll give it a try with the no line coloring and the tone on tone. It's really a lot of fun. Be sure to hit the subscribe button for more great content. Also make sure to check all the links below for all the other great creators and all the other awesome projects and maybe you'll win a prize. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.